it is really inspirational, right? So people say, why do you climb a mountain? Because it's there. Why do we explore space? Because it is a neon, it is the unknown. It basically says why we are here by answering that question. So I just can't think of a better way to bring everybody up, to bring education and science to the forefront of the national conversation. And, and I think India already has a society which is very much focused on science and engineering. So it's only natural that we progress into the space sector as well. So I'm very pleased um, and I'm very proud of everyone um, back home and everyone at ISRO. And it's just, it's an amazing thing to see these two missions happening um, so close together. Hi, you're watching Hindustan Times. I'm Aditi Prasad and with me is Dr. Anita Sen Gupta, an American aerospace engineer, a former NASA scientist. Uh, for me, that's uh, all, uh, you know, way beyond uh, my understanding of the of space science, so to speak. But, um, you know, we're here to talk to her about uh, India's very ambitious um, the Aditya L1 mission. You know, after successfully landing on the moon just a couple of weeks ago with Chandrayaan-3, ISRO, the Indian Space Research Organization, has now successfully launched Aditya L1 mission to study the sun. Um, you know, the, the project director said it's like a dream come true for him, uh, the ISRO project director for this for the Aditya L1 launch. I want to ask Dr. S uh, Anita Sengupta, what does this mean for uh, you know, space scientists across the world. What does this uh, mission mean for you, this mission to understand the sun? So the sun is obviously the center of our solar system, and it is the basis for weather here on Earth, and it's the basis for all of the space phenomena that we see in our solar system. So having access to the suite of scientific instruments which are on board this solar observatory is going to give huge insight into the physics of the sun and that benefits obviously the indian space agency but it benefits space scientists across the world did you expect india to be the next country to reach for the sun uh, or did that come as a surprise Oh, I'm, I'm not surprised at all. I think that the Indian Space Agency and the Indian people have an incredible launch field of capability. They've obviously sent an orbiter to Mars, landed a rover on the moon. So it's natural that they would be progressing into all aspects of space science. And heliophysics is an incredibly important element of uh, space science. And I know several Indian heliophysicists as well. So I know it's an area of interest in the community within India. Right. In fact, I was speaking to several people in the in, in America. Uh, uh, I think this was during Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit um, uh, to 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 the U.S. a few weeks, uh, a few months ago. And what came across is that many of the people, while while they appreciated the fact that the Indian Prime Minister was in the U, uh, U.S. and was being given a royal treatment by Biden, many of those people were not very familiar with India's prowess in, to, in the field of uh, space. Uh, they were not, that, that is why my question to you about, uh, was there a surprise element? So you obviously have some Indian origins somewhere as your name reflects, uh, but uh, so clearly you know ancestor in the field, but in general, what is the view uh, about India reaching for the sun in the international community? and especially in your community that you interact with closely. Yes, I've been to Israel twice. Um, I've been to the site in Bangalore um, and I went to the site in, I went to two sites in Bangalore actually to give lectures. And I used to work for NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. So we had already partnerships with the Indian Space Agency in terms of providing sophisticated scientific payloads. And we even had a mission concept proposal where we were working together for a a lunar lander mission. So I think the space community is well aware of the Indian Space Agency is what they're capable of. So probably maybe it's more on the global stage. Not everyone pays as much attention to space exploration. And obviously everyone has familiarity with the you know NASA of the US Space Agency. So it's really more I think about getting the word out. Um, and clearly the world was uh, watching um, on the, the lunar landing and obviously now the rover moving on the surface of the moon. So it was you know, I think that's where social media comes in. And I think that's where, you know, doing broadcast comes in so we can bring in more visibility into the Indian Space Agency and the India-specific uh, missions that are already happening. 
Right. What are what, you know in terms of the number of countries that have that have launched similar missions? Which are the other countries that have launched similar missions to study the sun, like Israel? I mean, there must be a handful. Count it. You can count them on your fingers, perhaps. Yeah, there are very few, and, and there is a NASA observatory which I think is parked in the same um, L1 Lagrange point, um, making measurements in that region. But of course, with each mission comes new space. Um, measurements that can be made, new scientific payloads, and in general, the scientific community enjoys sharing data um, between each other, right? Because what, the more data you collect on the sun and the interior structure of the sun and the behaviors and the phenomena within the sun, the better everybody's computational models of the sun can, be, can become. So it really is about working together um, to collect more and more information so that we can all be informed. And the reason for that is the sun impacts our weather, it affects space weather, which then impacts telecommunications, right, by a satellite. So it's important to all of us across the world to understand the sun's behavior, to be able to predict the sun's behavior better. So uh, I, I like the fact, I think that all space exploration should be international collaborations. Right. Oh, what about, what about you know, of course, uh, the scientists, many of the experts that we've spoken to, they've talked about how uh, this is a pioneering leap to study the sun. Uh, you obviously uh, have know about the entire program, the scientific um, uh, reasons, the mission for the study. Uh, could you sort of shed light to us on why would or why is it a pioneering leap if there is a NASA and there's a European Space Agency already doing this, doing a similar thing? Well, so every mission collects another piece of data. So when there's another mission that comes around, whether it's another NASA mission, ESA mission, or ISRO mission, it's they're going to collect new data, whether it's data that's never been collected before or collected in a way where you can understand it better because you have higher resolution, a longer accuracy. Mm -hmm. In the case of this mission, it's collecting you know solar wind. Um, information particles. It's kind of uh, not just remote sensing in the sun, but it's also particle experiments. So when you make those types of measurements, you just get much better scientific data, much better engineering data, which helps you understand a model for the behavior of the sun. So every mission adds to the next mission, but this has seven total payloads. That's a lot of science, which is going to be collected. And it's going to be there for many, many years in that wonderful spot to constantly observe the sun. So I think the right way to look at it is that it adds to the existing knowledge, but in a huge way because of the number of scientific payloads and the sophistication of those scientific payloads, because obviously this mission was just launched. So it reflects the latest of the greatest in um, measurement technology, whether it's in the X-ray spectrum or whether it's an imaging technology or if it's looking at particles of the solar wind, for example. Right. What we understand that you know, this mission with all the seven payloads, uh, you know, was developed completely indigenously by India. What does this mean for India's global heft as far as uh, space exploration, as far as space science is concerned? Well, I mean, it, it goes to show that they are one of the major players in space exploration across the world. And I think coupled that to the launch vehicle capability um, and the orbiter capability is kind of a complete ability to do everything on the international stage when it comes to space exploration. And ultimately, that's what I've always hoped to see, that we have a global space community, because when we go to the moon, when we go beyond, when we have human presence in space beyond you know, where we're at now, which is in low Earth orbit, that's going to be a global challenge that's going to have global um, participants it's going to have funding from agencies across the world so this kind of is where i think we want everybody to go with their space programs is working together uh so yeah i just can't it's a wonderful thing and i think in general solar physics is probably one of the most important areas to focus on because it affects everything in the solar system right the solar system was formed because of the sun you know everything that we experience here on earth in terms of our environment right is because of changes in dynamics in the sun in addition to of course anthropogenic emissions that we have to deal with so being able to understand changes in the solar aspect of weather as compared to changes in the weather due to things that we're doing here on earth we can't answer those questions unless we make these measurements how do you you know india has also recently opened up its space sector to private players how is that going to add to the entire uh, boost that the entire space exploration sector is about to receive and also not just in within india but globally 
Yeah, so having a commercial space sector is key because that enables continual investment, it enables competition, it enables efficiency, it enables finding people, it enables finding business cases to say, how are we going to use space? And clearly there's an obvious use case for space from a business perspective, which is telecommunications, but there's things beyond that, right? And having an affordable launch capability, having an affordable suite of orbiter capability, you know, spacecraft bus capability, couples to having a healthier space sector. And ultimately what that leads to is an economic boom, right? It creates more jobs. And I think what's really important to me as an educator, because I'm also a professor is it really does inspire the next generation of young people to become scientists and engineers because they become excited by the findings from space exploration like this mission. And I think I agree with you because uh, the kind of interest, not and, and not just Chandrayaan, but uh, Aditya L1, uh, both these events, both these uh, uh, launches by ISRO within weeks of each other have sort of there's so much of interest. I mean, one never knew that there was so much of interest in space as far as Indians are concerned. You know, the only thing you hear about and talk about and people are talking about seems to be Chatrayan 3 and uh, and now other there. Uh, so, yes, and in terms of as far as boosting the scientific temper of the youth as concerned, it will, I'm hoping, go a long way to boost that. Yeah, it is really inspirational, right? So people say, why do you climb a mountain? Because it's there. Why do we explore space? Because it is a neon, it is the unknown. It basically says why we are here by answering that question. So I just can't think of a better way to bring everybody up, to bring education and science to the forefront of the national conversation. And, and I think India already has a society which is very much focused on science and engineering. So it's only natural that it would progress into the space sector as well. So I'm very pleased um, and I'm very proud of everyone um, back home and everyone at ISRO. And it's just, it's an amazing thing to see these two missions happening um, so close together. And you obviously have some Indian uh, artisans, uh, you know, uh, in you. Uh, you want to talk about that with us? Uh, and because of those Indian artisans uh, that you have, do you feel a special pride in the fact that India has uh, sort of joined this select club of nations who are now doing, uh, you know, uh, part of this mission to study the star sun? Well, of course. I mean, my father was Indian. Uh, my family lives in Mumbai and they live in Kolkata. So I was just there recently, actually, uh, for several weeks back in March, uh, doing talks at ISRO and at different universities. So I really do enjoy being able to come back to India, visit my family and share kind of my um, visions of space exploration. And being able to combine that with indigenous space exploration is kind of the most amazing thing. So I, it makes me really happy and really proud um, as an Indian woman uh, based in the United States to be able to share with people here. Because I actually, in my class that I teach at USC, I'm now including all of the latest results coming from Chandrayaan as well as Aditya, right? So now I can include in my suite of spacecraft that I talk about with my students also the Indian capabilities that are out there. And that makes me really proud as well, as you might have mentioned. Makes us all proud. Thank you so much for joining us.